Thanks for your patience, everyone. We appreciate it. Lots, lots of technical things today. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and I would like to open the meeting of the Woodstock uh, Village Board of Trustees at 7.32, a little bit late on August 9th. Um, the, uh, the first thing I'd like to do, oops, I watched. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do, um, I'm, if it's okay with the rest of the board, I wanted to just put citizen comments first. Um, is, mm -hmm. is everybody okay with that, mm -hmm. Jeffrey? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so are there any citizen comments this evening? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to interviews for the Village Historic Preservation Commission. Um, first person on our list is Wendy Marion. Wendy, are you here? Oh, she's up there. Okay. Hi. Hi. See, yes. I'm Wendy Wright Marinin. Forgive my Zoom presence. I am experiencing my first case of COVID. I'm sorry. So my throat, my voice is a little off too. But so far, so good. Um, okay. We'll go easy on you. Thank you. So, um, Wendy, we've got your application here. Um, could you just let us know um, why you're interested in being a part of the Village Historic Preservation Commission? Yes. <laughs> I had been following the idea of this commission both for the village and the town during the course of the meetings over the last, is it a year or two? I'm not sure how long, where initially the idea of the certified legal government was put forward by Neil Leitner and Phil Newberg, um, knowing that there's access to grant money through the National Park Service and that Woodstock has not taken advantage of that uh, those possibilities. And as I listened to the uh, idea, the shape of it, the purpose, it just kept making more and more sense to me. Uh, so I did say from early on, I'm interested as did others so that the select board and the trustees would feel comfortable moving forward, knowing they had some citizen support in pursuing this uh, concept. So now that that seems to be in play and I was able to apply formally, I appreciate that opportunity. The reason I'm interested is I live in the village and I am respectfully delighted to be in a historic design review uh, kind of situation. I respect it. I love the history of the town and some of its treasures. Um, and more recently, uh, got more involved in um, Pentangle and understand the theater and the town hall goals and concerns. And I also may have, you, you may remember, I'm very interested in the preservation of Faulkner Park. So having gotten involved on those levels, I feel uh, excited and interested to work with a team to help the town achieve its goals and the village achieve its goals. Um, trustees, do you have any questions for Wendy? See, and I think Wendy is extremely qualified. I, for one, would move that we accept her for this position. Okay. Is, a second motion. is that a motion? That's a motion. I second motion. Okay, seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Congratulations, Wendy. Thank you so much for volunteering. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Well, Thanks thank you as volunteers. I'm happy to help in some way. Thank you. Okay, now go rest. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, next we've got uh, Dr. Ellen Bradley. Is she here? I'm here. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, so uh, I really um, have a lot of questions about what this committee involved i've been given very little information apart from the title and um, you know, the i filled in my application form i've spent all my adult life and before involved in historic preservation of one form or another so it's obviously something that's always been dear to my heart i've worked for the national trust in england and i've had an antique store dealing with local 
antiques for 30 years in this area. Um, I've been in historical society 12 years on the board there and 15 years probably on the collections committee, also Pentangle on the house tours. Um, but I don't know how many people are on the committee and you know I, I think the design review committee does a very good job in, in controlling um, development and preserving the nature of Woodstock which is very special. So I'm not sure where we, I don't want to infringe on their um, unit uh, for what they do. So I'm, I'm a, a little puzzled about how, what this committee would do uh, that's specific, but you know, I'm very happy to, to work on this because I, I believe that we need to keep our history vibrant and present and move forward and yet preserve what has made our town so special. I'm looking for more information. Yeah, Philip, that would be yeah. you, right? Sure. <laughs> would you like me to? Yes, yes please. Uh, so basically, the committee has to meet, I think it's four times a year, uh, minimally, by the rules that the Park Service sets up for certified local governments. Um, there are a minimum of three members. And um, basically, you have an opportunity to think about what the community might need for preservation other than bricks and mortar. So if it's um, a tour on your cell phone like Norwich has done with its um, committee, or if it's a preservation plan for this building, those are the kinds of things that the committee can propose and then get funding through um, the State Office of Historic Preservation which in turn is um, channeling funds from the National Park Service. So 10% of the monies that the State of Vermont's Historic Preservation Office gets go towards certified local governments in the state. I think there may be somewhere under 20 such entities across the whole state. So um, the opportunities to get you know, sizable grant money for planning purposes is, is there. Well, thank you, and that, that answers my question and uh, just re reaffirms my interest in, in working on that committee. Trustees, do you have any questions for Dr. Bradley? I do not. Jeffrey? I do not, thank you. Anybody else? No. Nope. Okay. Um, with that, I would make a motion um, to accept Dr. Bradley's application to uh, to be a part of this board. Is there a second? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Thank you. Uh, uh, motion carries. Um, congratulations, Dr. Bradley, and thank you so much for volunteering. Thank you. Next item on our agenda this evening um, is uh, uh, we did citizen comments. Um, are there any additions or deletions to the posted agenda? There's one item I think we should discuss perhaps later in the meeting, uh, Seton, and that yep. would be uh, house numbers in the 9-11 system in the village of Woodstock. Okay. Let's put that in new business. Yes. That's okay with everyone. Thank you. Okay. Uh, then next, uh, is there anything else? No, good. Okay. Uh, next is the manager's report. Excuse Tom? me. You, you Thanks. Here. And uh, apologize for the screen <laughs> and the window in the middle of it. I'm communicating with the person that's hosting this who's not here, she's remote, and can't get away, can't get rid of it. Uh, for anybody else uh, that is going to speak this evening, if you could uh, either come up on the stage or get closer. Uh, Zoom's not picking up voices uh, in a distance. So we could move this down too. Yeah, we could possibly do that. Yeah. yeah. Although, no, we don't have to do that. Oh, okay. Well, we'll do our best. Because you can't hear. Okay. Um, a lot of the, my report, I think you've seen, and um, some of it you've heard before, because I think I've reported it at a joint meeting, if, not, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm going to repeat myself and also the public gets to hear some of the things that's going on. So uh, the first item is a new hire. We hired a part-time 
planning and zoning assistant. Uh, that person's going to work about an average of 25 hours a week in that office, helping the uh, planning and zoning um, director. Uh, there's a lot of paperwork needed to uh, conduct all the meetings that uh, are orchestrated from that office. And uh, that person will be helping doing that as well as helping in the manager's office when there's people out. And then we're going to be doing some cross training with uh, all the people in those uh, offices. Uh, quite a few people have been asking about the uh, Village Green Historic sign that has uh, been missing for some time. That sign is uh, a property of the uh, uh, Division of uh, Historic Preservation. It's a state, state agency to buy that. that. And they took it down to refurbish it. Uh, I checked with them, and uh, we we're supposed to see it within 30 to 45 days from, from now. They had to send it back to the foundry that actually made it. I have no idea where that is. I did not ask them. Um, the municipal management replacement process has begun. Uh, before this meeting, there was a joint meeting of the trustees and the select board, and we met with a uh, recruiter uh, that would be uh, coordinating all that, somebody that's very experienced in this and uh, in the profession in general. Uh, we unfortunately had a key personnel registration uh, resignation. Uh, the public works director uh, tendered his resignation effective September 2nd. It's going to be a big loss for Springfield. He's doing a great job. What's next? What's next? Oh boy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's embarrassing. Um, it's been a long day. <laughs> um, so uh, we've already advertised for that position in um, organizations that uh, represent uh, municipalities similar to the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and um, indeed as well. Uh, deadline for resumes is the uh, 24th of this month. Um, unfortunately, uh, the public's not going to be able to see this uh, graph and some information about uh, our grand list, but our listers provided this uh, to you folks just to have an idea that we are seeing some uh, growth in the grand list. It really started, uh, um, it, well, bottomed out in 2020, and since then, you know, we're, we're seeing, seeing some, some uh, growth. It's modest, uh, you know, in an in a, uh, area of about 2%. Uh, per year, but that's uh, better than nothing, and certainly much better than zero or negative. Um, any questions? Uh, I have questions. One, yeah, ahead, uh, you mentioned Tom the uh, about the Woodstock historical sign on the Village Green. Did you ask, or are you aware of the uh, Morgan Horse sign that they that's also been taken back for repair quite some time ago, um, and when we might expect that back in the village? Uh, I was not aware of that. However, the person that I spoke to said they had taken eight signs down uh, throughout the state, and they had received six. So. It seems that the two here in Woodstock are still the ones outstanding. Um, and could I, you, I can could only you wager a guess as to when we'll see that sign. Where, where was it located, Jeffrey? It was located uh, in, in the village on the uh, Susie Stoltz's property, um, right in, uh, on, on Central Street. Uh, okay. They must have grabbed them at the same time. And uh, perhaps you could inquire about that so it just doesn't fall between the cracks. A lot of yeah, people sure. love, love that. The, the, yeah, second the second question I have, thank you, by the way. The second question I have is, um, are we still expecting a report from the, from the Two Rivers Planning Commission regarding the sidewalks this month in, in the yes. village of Woodstock? That's still online? That's still happening? I have heard uh, that nothing about it, uh, so they were promising it sometime mid-August, mid to late August, so 
we're in the ninth, so uh, I suspect it's still going to be uh, delivered about that time. Okay, if we don't get it by the third week, uh, would you make an inquiry on behalf of the village, sure. please? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. That's all my questions. Um, I have another sign question for you, Tom. Yeah. Um, months ago, uh, I'm going to say towards the beginning of the year, um, we had a group approach us about putting a sign up to mark the anniversary of the Marquis de Lafayette's um, victory tour or farewell tour, <clears throat> and that was supposed to come, we thought, in June. No, September. It's September? Okay. Yeah. So now we're just waiting on that. Okay. Uh, it's slightly peculiar. <laughs> I might have to s search my emails because uh, we did hear from this woman that is uh, in charge of all that, and I asked her uh, what, if anything, the town or the village had to do to assist her. I've never heard back from them, from her, so I don't know. Okay. Yeah, but I do remember it was uh, after Labor Day, sometime okay. in September. Okay, I remember it incorrectly then. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, um, are there any questions about that part of the manager's report, trustees? Yeah. Okay, um, then next let's move on to the, uh, to the financial report. And just as a reminder, everybody here and at home, um, these packets that, that we get printed out and sent to us, these are always available um, on the website. So if you just go under the trustees section, there will be an agenda for each meeting and the entire packets will be there. So this is information um, that you can print out ahead of time or look at on your phone while you're at a meeting. Okay, do you want to walk us through any highlights that we should be aware of? Well, it's very early in the budget year. <laughs> <laughs> and really, if you, you know, it should be... Uh, 8.33% spent to be on budget. And, and as I look at the different uh, uh, summaries or bottom lines for departments, I see different amounts. Uh, for instance, administrations at 5.8%. Um, uh, and, um, uh oh, police at 11.7%. <laughs> Said I can't help but to laugh. I'm looking at Robbie, putting up, putting the pressure on him. I'm, I'm sure all these things uh, are uh, all explainable, and you know it's it's really too early in the year to uh, to get alarmed at any of these uh, minor over expenditures. So. I just had a question about uh, like office administration. It's at 21.14 percent. Is that something um, on the first page? Uh, second grouping. It's administration, trustees, um, oh yeah, trustees, executive, executive office, office administration. administration. And 21% has been used. Is that something, you know, if that's for something that was just like, it's an upfront cost? And... Yeah, it has to be. Okay. Yeah, and I don't, I don't have the detail as to exactly what that expenditure is. It's um, $1,600 that's been spent out of 7,700. Um, so, yeah. I, uh, you know, we're, we're incurring a lot of unusual expenses. Okay. And hopefully it's not one in that category. Okay. So. And that's something that maybe Zoe would have? Yeah. Yeah. We'd follow up with her? Yeah, I can, I can uh, let the trustees know what's going on with that. Okay. Hey, I have a question um, in the uh, budget um, concerning the East End and the income. Uh, it shows 2550 um, and we also agreed that we would be reimbursed $1,000 for the parking lot uh, availability for those concerts. I wonder where that $1,000 has been placed in here, and perhaps we can get an answer, if not tonight, um, sent to the trustees to explain that. Yeah, I'm not so sure we've received it, but we can find out. Good thing to speak, though. Thank you. To the town? Yeah. The okay. tangle pay is at least nine of the ten, right, Jeffrey? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's the parking that's right. right. Nine, nine of the, the yeah, yeah. it's nine hundred of the thousand that we put up. Yes. yes. 
that uh, Pentangle was to pay us. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's safe. And, and we should, we should know, know where, where that's, that's been placed, placed uh, if we have received it. Because that's all designated. Yeah, it's obviously been miscoded, so it should show up here as a revenue. One other question, uh, short-term rental enforcement, uh, and David Green could probably answer this. Is that $75 represent a late registration? David, do you want to answer that? I can't hear a word. Oh, okay. Seventy-five dollars in the in the uh, short-term rentals. Does that represent the late registration? That's what Jeffrey's question is. For this year. Yes. Yes. I don't know what that is. Okay. All right. So perhaps we can find that out. I still got a couple people I'm working with, and I may not have seen the permit yet. So. Well, perhaps Zoe could answer what that what that's for. Um, and get back to us. Thank you. Okay. Jeffrey, did you have any other questions about the budget? Um, yes. Yes. One other question. The village parks. Um, $450 expenditure. Uh, what did what was uh, under the highway, highway department, traffic control, highway maintenance, and so forth? What was that four hundred and fifty dollar village component uh, expenditure? No, actually, yeah, I yes. think that was the fertilizer that we temporarily paid for fertilization. Makes sense. Makes sense. Thank, Thank you, Tom. You, Tom. Answers, Answers the question. question. I have no other no questions. questions. Okay, uh, trustees, are there any other questions? No. You good? Okay, then we will move on to uh, the police chief's report, Bobby. And can you come up so that you're a little closer to the microphone? You can sit with us. Well, I'll hit the cord. In any case, uh, so I anticipate Sarge just wants to be back um, in September. Hey. Um, we've hired a new full time officer. It's Officer uh, Philip Call. Phil uh, has over 40 years of law enforcement experience, most recently retired from the Windsor County Sheriff's Department. Uh, he's been, been there, there for over 20 years, years. Uh, retired and um, got bored, I guess, and said he wanted to come back to work. So <laughs> we were happy to have him. We, that still leaves us currently with uh, one, one more vacancy, but we're hoping to interview a couple of applicants in the next couple of weeks and uh, progress in the uh, process. Is that a full or a part-time vacancy? Part, uh, full-time. Okay. Yeah, we've got a, a pretty good stable of part-timers right now, so we're in good shape and we're able to fill all our shifts without any issues right now. August, uh, on August 23rd to the 25th, uh, Woodstock Police Department will be hosting, um, and most all of the Woodstock officers will be participating in, uh, a single officer response to after active uh, killer training this training is going to take place at the Woodstock Elementary School in the courthouse mm -hmm. and here in town and at the high school over um, a three-day period. And we conduct this training every year in-house, but um, uh, each year since 2015, we uh, are in-house and we had these same trainers that are coming up uh, back in 2015. And it was uh, really, really excellent training with uh, Uvalde fresh on our minds. Of course, I want all the officers in Woodstock to be prepared. Uh, the chances are that if we respond to some kind of uh, active shooter event, there's only gonna be one officer on duty. So it's imperative, I think, that officers are uh, have the skill set to engage somebody like that, even if they're by themselves, which is why uh, we brought these folks up from, they're up uh, from Florida. What's the name of the group? The, the uh, Southeast, Tactical um, training. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. It's, it's close. It's close. <laughs> in any case, uh, moving on, meters. Um, so meter report. So this year we had um, 15,000, or excuse me, this uh, last month of July, we had $15,910.19. Uh, in parking revenue, 
4,047.90 was kiosks, 6,903.29 were the single space meters, and the Park Mobile app accounted for $4,959 of that. To compare, uh, in July of 2021, we had $16,894.18. In the ballpark, obviously, uh, 2021 was the uh, everyone coming out of COVID, but the staycation, nobody was really going anywhere, but they were coming up here. So that probably accounts for that. Uh, and then in, in, in real stark comparison, July 2020, uh, $784. So, <laughs> so we're looking good compared to 2020. And that's what I have for my report. And how are the new meters? Are you finding oh, them yes, to they're still, still be good? functioning great? Um, the rep came up for the single space meters not too long ago, um, tweaked a few things, took care of a couple of issues, so they're very responsive in the customer service side of it. The kiosks have worked um, act really well, um, and the Park Mobile app just continues to function as any app would. Yeah. Awesome. Question for the chief. Connectivity in the village. Uh, and if we don't have connectivity in the village, then the app doesn't work so great. But. Yes. Jeffrey, did you have a question? Yes. Um, Chief, uh, has there been any response to selling the old meters that we discussed a month ago? So, the, good question. Uh, I haven't put the RFP out yet to my, it's on my, it's on my list and every morning I'm talking to Dave Green and I'm like, I got to put that RFP out. And so I will get on it this week though. Yeah. And, and another question. I do know there's at least two uh, people that are probably going to bid on it. So I think we'll have a good response. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, one other question. So the training that's coming up that you mentioned um, with the group coming up from Florida, do, do the does the, do the feds pay for that? Where do the funds come from for for that training? Right. So the uh, there's all there's outs, there's other agencies that are going to attend the training, and but it'll come out of our training budget in order to pay for it. I see. A, a proportion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And with that um, training, are you planning to do a postal and listserv or anything in the newspaper so people aren't alarmed if they walk by the elementary school and see whatever? Yeah. It's not going to be, I mean, it'll all just be contained inside the building. Oh, okay. So it won't be it's outside. It's not going to be any loud explosions or anything like that. It'll be within, inside the building. Okay. You might see a couple extra police cars, yeah. but aside from that. You wouldn't even know we're there. Good. No actors. Uh, no. Well, there may be some role playing, but wouldn't. Inside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, trustees, do you have any questions for Robbie? Okay. All right. Thank awesome. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next is police chief's report. Uh, next is old business memorial policy. Um, I think, yep, yeah, we've got Philip here. Um, Philip is going to share with us what his group has been working on. Um, as a reminder, um, months ago, we had a couple of people asked to put up um, memorials, something, permanent fixtures in the town with names on them. We decided to table those and have um, Philip's group uh, take a, a bigger, broader look at naming rights and uh, you know, putting benches and memorials and things around the village. Um, and so his group has come up with a draft, um, which I think is very comprehensive. <laughs> um, and so can you just sort of walk us through, everybody's gotten a copy of it, but can you walk us through sort of like what your process was and, and how you help think that this can help us? So as you uh, mentioned, um, uh, first, I don't think I've had the pleasure of meeting oh. our new interim manager. So. Uh, Bill Newberg, Four Church Street, and I don't know if we officially met. No, I'm Brenda so. Blakeman, 16 nice. Prospect Street. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, so, yeah, we um, spoke, I think, in May, and um, at the time, the group wanted a, a bench um, on the green, and I indicated that the Design Review Board um, typically does look at these kinds of things and we hadn't seen it so perhaps we could um, draft some kind of policy so mm -hmm. got to work and um, 
actually one of the members of the design review board is here tonight, um, Bev Humpstone, and we've discussed uh, the policy. We thought um, the same draft that you all have. We thought it might make sense. Um, Jack Rossi, another member of our committee, suggested that the Friends of East End Park have an opportunity to comment, um, input perhaps, and um, we wondered if um, we might want to look at the trustees and perhaps the select board creating a select and very, um, I don't want to dismiss by saying quick, but um, a group that by the end of the year could perhaps um, massage the document that you all see and make certain that it might apply for the whole town. Um, because, uh, of course, a lot of the kinds of things that are in that document might affect Tassville, might okay. affect South Woodstock and other areas. So uh, public spaces within there. And I think at one of the meetings, and I'm not familiar with the legal um, separation between the town and village, but at one meeting, I believe, um, John Spector had indicated that all the property is technically the towns. And so, like thing. Um, yeah, so I think of perhaps an inclusive policy that, that incorporates all of what stuff makes sense. And so for that reason, um, when I had written you, Seaton, earlier um, on the first, I suggested perhaps um, two reps from the VDRB, one rep from the South Woodstock Design Review Board, um, two reps from the Planning Commission, um, maybe someone from the History Center, um, someone perhaps, I mean, this is just my stream of consciousness, the Billings Park Commission, and maybe perhaps the Garden Club. Um, and I think if that, those folks could take a look at this, add their input uh, with the very strict um, uh, understanding that they've got to put this quickly. Yeah, <laughs> quickly before uh, the joint group, then um, maybe we'd be at a point to say, yeah, let's adopt this. Um, interestingly, related to the earlier issue of the interviews, um, the kinds of things like these memorials could easily be funded through the grants. So um, it was interesting for me to hear about the Marquis de Lafayette sign. That would be something, for example, that I would think um, might fall under this purview. Okay. So, that's, that's what we've been up to. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions about the document. It, I actually was <clears throat> looking a bit, this was from a town in, um, I think it's California, but what I liked about it was comprehensive enough, but not um, too long. <laughs> yeah. And the other aspect is that the new town planner said that he thought in the new planning um, document that's being created, town plan, that reference could be made to um, perhaps uh, the guidelines as appendix or something of that nature. Yeah, yeah that's great. So that's what I think I can update you on tonight. Okay. Um, Trustees, do you have questions for Philip? What do you think about his idea of this, the smaller, the sub, the sub subcommittee? Kind of select group. Yeah. I have a, I, I have a comment. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I, first of all, I think that's a good suggestion, Phil. And, and you've done, this is a, a really good start. And thank you for the work you've done on this. Um, because the, uh, the village would be, uh, reviewing and granting policies and procedures within the village of Woodstock. I do think the document needs to take, you know, there could be a, a duplicate for the town that says town, but I think that this needs to name the places we're considering in the village. I, I, just a suggestion. So uh, we're talking about the village green, uh, Triaboo Park, uh, the East End, and Teagle's Landing, all of which are within the village boundaries. Um, and uh, since we would be reviewing after the Village Development Review Board, um, any monuments and plaques and so forth, um, I think the wording should reflect that. 
And in places you are talking within this document, it talks about town uh, 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 where I think it's appropriately should be worded as village. Um, um, but um, those are my suggestions to take that into account. And I like the idea of making a document that will work for all the elements of the town of Woodstock, but the specific areas I named those four parks in particular, um, I think should be within a, the village. Uh, it, it was pointed out to me, for example, that the character of East End Park is wildly different than the Green, right? So, um, it character is, di is different. However, um, I, I think that the things that are named here uh, would apply to all of the parks. That's my opinion. Right. It, it may be possible to call out the various areas that you mentioned and then by extension <clears throat> look at the town. But that's where I think a broader group might might be good at words. Thank you, Phil. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. uh, I like the idea of, of bringing together the 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 group with a couple of from different groups. Would you anticipate that the town planner, uh, development yes. zoning administrator, <laughs> the zoning administrator also be sort of the the guide for this group? Sure, okay. that makes sense. If staff Give him one more thing to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well Steve, Steve Stephen is aware of this, so okay. uh, he could certainly mention that it came up at the meeting. I don't think he'll be surprised at the least. <laughs> okay. Um, and so what is the timeline that you that you're recommending? Well, I would think that if the group can be gathered in September, I don't think they need more than a couple meetings. And okay. I would hope that by your December meeting, we can say this is the tweaked document we recommend for your group. Okay. Maybe it's at a joint meeting with the select board and the trustees. That gives them some time to review it, see if there's some serious omissions or changes that would benefit the long run. Okay. And um, Tom, I have a, a technical question for you. For these, because this is a group that's going to be made up of other groups, um, do we need to up, appoint and approve the members, or are they free to say to put those, those groups together, together themselves? themselves? Do we in the select you board to do that? Initially, appoint their group. Yes. The members of their group. So in September, do they need to come back to us or and or the select board to have that approved? I think that would be the okay. proper way to do it. Yeah, even though it's a subcommittee, they're going to be still representing the village okay. and potentially the town. So, yeah. Okay. So however you decide. I'll get with Stephen and okay. see if we can't have names ready for you for, um, for that date. And it's the same second. Um, second Tuesday. Tuesday. Perhaps we can put that together. Okay. Right. And then, of course, if you want to publicize it, it can go, we can put it out on the listserv and have right. it. Right. I, I guess I hesitate to do that. Oh, because it's made up of other groups. Okay. Yeah. And those members are already there, and I don't know their personal schedule. I suspect it'll fall gotcha. to who has the time and interest. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Then then just work it all through, Stephen. Okay. Sounds awesome. good. Thank Great. you so much. Thank you, Bob. I, I this was be good a lot going of going forward because then we'll, we'll have something. Yeah, and it, I think it'll be really helpful for us to have like a reference right. to go to, so we're not just guessing. Exactly. <laughs> Great, thank you so much for your time. You. I appreciate it. Of course. Okay, next item, we are moving on to new business. Uh, the Woodstock Masonic Lodge Haunted House. I know we've got a couple of people here to talk to us about that. Come on up, y'all. Yeah, I'll just give you a little background, uh, Brad. Uh, approached me some time ago about this and I told him you know this is really on private property uh, we don't have to issue a permit but he wanted everybody to know what was going on he's touched base with everybody um, and I'll let him take it from there great hi guys hi, hi. welcome let me know if I'm not talking loud enough I do my best yeah, um, <laughs> My name is Brad Prescott. Um, I'm a member of the Woodstock Masonic Lodge. Uh, I live on Noble Wood Road. 
um, and the um, the members of the lodge um, really wanted to do uh, something new for our community um, and give back in, in a new way um, and had decided and voted together uh, that we would really like to do a charity haunted house on an annual basis with proceeds going to a local charity every year. Um, so uh, what we would very much like to do is, is a haunted house inside the existing Masonic building on the first floor uh, with sort of tickets and things out front on the, um, the nights of, it would be the 28th, which is a Friday, 29th of October. Um, this is a um, family friendly event. So we're trying to uh, really target um, the children between the ages of say six and 12 parents um we're really not going for glory we're going for for fun um and um and the proceeds of, of would go to uh this year would go to uh, zach's place uh, that, and um, we're very excited about doing this we have guys building sets and so forth and we've uh we've met with the uh our fire chief uh to go through our plans of what we would like to do uh and he and as well as the state fire marshal, we did it at the same time. And um, they had some terrific suggestions on, on how to do this better uh, and make it safer, make the building safer. So we're pursuing all of that. Um, of course, as Tom said, we, we met with zoning and Tom just to make sure that we're being good neighbors. And that's what this is really about. I mean, coming here tonight is it's just to promote a dialogue and um, tell you what we're, we're thinking about and what we're planning. Uh, and our enthusiasm and hear from you guys and see if you have any questions or, or concerns that we, we can talk about. I love it. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I grew up with something similar and I think, and it was always a highlight. Um, and we obviously got a lot more kids in the last couple of years. So <laughs> I think you'll be very busy. I assume you talked to Robbie about traffic flow and parking and where you'll get to that part about making sure that kids yeah. don't get hit as they're crossing the street. Yeah, we, we haven't talked to the chief about about the, the street yet and okay. the traffic at the street. Um, we've had a lot of internal discussions about safety on the site itself mm -hmm. um, because people will be coming in the front of the building mm -hmm. and then exiting out the back. So we are assigning staff just to ferry people around the building. We'll put cones so people know where to walk in the uh, on the lawn instead of in traffic. Um, and we're recruiting the Boy Scouts to help us with some of that sort of um, ushering people around outside safely, um, as well as somebody at the back entrance to usher people down those steps and so forth. So uh, there are also ushers inside the building for safety there too, and uh, two designated fire watch people um, just, just do that. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of that level. Um, we don't anticipate a lot of extra traffic from this. Um, it's really going to be just people turning into the parking lot to park mm -hmm. and then leaving. Um, so we haven't really talked about having a manned traffic control. But nevertheless, I think we still should talk to the chief and just coordinate to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay. So I have a question. How do you uh, keep it family friendly without scaring the kids too much? And uh, do you have a theatrical plan of some sign? Uh, somebody that's doing the internal workings of they're going to go from this station and somebody would jump out and say boo or not or I mean, how, how are you working that out in the detail we do have a plan yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm, do I'm happy to share it with you but you know not, that, that you, a super just, secret plan no, and i want to know what you know you have some background in doing this you have people that have done it before or yeah we have people that have done it before okay. um you know uh it's the background of the, of the brothers at the lodge who are, who are participating participating in this is a very wide range I'm myself an architect by trade. That's what I do during the day. So I'm not a professional uh, haunted house person, <laughs> per se. Um, in high school theater, but I don't think that counts. Uh, no, it's it's really just a matter of balance. You know, when we talk about the scenes together, we talk about it wanting to be scary, but more on the on the realm of being fun. And the scariness can be anticipation of surprise more than goriness mm -hmm. um and that, you know that's a fine line because when you've got the six to 12 age range the 12 year olds see a lot on tv and so forth so you want to make it so it's fun for them too so we have 
some gory things, and then we have some sort of more like fun house things. Um, and we're trying to strike that middle ground. And then we have a lot of um, uh, safety movies to kind of help, you know, if kids get a, a little overwhelmed, we'll have somebody there watching over. Great plan. That's what the for. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I've already marked in the calendar, so I assume we're going to prove it. So. Well, you know, you guys are welcome to, to 12. To, <laughs> to 12. <laughs> yeah, but I would be a chaperone. So, yeah, you're going to have to borrow somebody's kids, uh, you know. Uh, Take mine, please. Okay. <laughs> um, have you talked to, I assume you talked to the Ottapuchi Health Center about parking and all that sort of stuff? Well, the, um, they don't use it during at night. Okay. This is, this is, you know, four to nine. Okay. Um, but uh, did I not say that before? No, but all that's times. okay. Yeah. Um, but we won't be talking to them anytime. Okay. That's, I think that's important just to make sure we're talking to all of our neighbors, both here and locally. Okay. And then obviously, and then at some point, you'll talk to the apartments that are right next to you, people who live there. Um, we weren't planning on doing a full notice. You okay. know, that's a lot of administrative mailings and so forth. Okay. It's even a little fancy. I mean, it's really 10 hours worth of activity. Okay. Um, but, um, so you might just want to give them a heads up, up, especially if there's yeah. like loud noises. Um, yeah. you, you know, know, there's always a concern about like Fourth of July, things sound like other things, and yeah. screaming might set people off. So just a heads yeah. up might be helpful. Yeah, this is uh, pretty low key. Everything's going to be inside. We, we were thinking that we would have some low level um, uh, music kind of, you know, the, mm -hmm. the haunted haunted kind of music, mm -hmm. low level screaming kind of stuff outside for ambiance, but nothing really intense. Mm -hmm. Maybe some dry ice, you know. <laughs> There's some funny scenes that we're talking about, a fake cemetery, no fun. It's just for two nights. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just don't want anybody to freak out. No, no. Okay. Understand. Yeah. Noise level is also something we were very sensitive about. We want to create an ambiance without creating a disturbance. Does anybody else have questions, comments, trustees? One comment is, um, Thank you for choosing the charity you chose. Zach's Place is a, a fantastic uh, charity for you to be supported by this. So thank you for thinking of them. And good luck to you. This sounds like a terrific project. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. We look forward thank to it. Yeah. Uh, next item under news business is to approve the fiscal year 23 tax rate. This is in our packets. Did you guys not get your packets? I think they're upstairs. That's okay. Oh, I got upstairs. Was it emailed to us? Uh, it's on here. Was it sent to us by email? Yes, it was emailed. Yeah, it was in that email. That's okay. That's all right. She's working there. Oh, okay. Um, so, Tom, do you want to walk us sure. through this, please? <laughs> I'm going to put it all on you. All right. That's fine. All right. Oh, here we go. I have to take back. Oh, there you go. Um, so let's see, I, I think I'm going to start from the bottom up and uh, say that the uh, fiscal year 23 tax rate is really half a cent over the fiscal year 22 tax rate. Uh, last year, the tax rate was 0.199. This year it's going to be 0 0.204. What that translates to, if you uh, relate that to $100,000 of assessed value, it's $4.98 increase. Um, so if you had an assessment of $200,000, you double that. So that's the impact. Can you say it a little bit louder? I just want to make sure everybody heard you. Oh, I'm sorry. So that's. Um, the difference in the tax rate from last year to this year for the village is going to be only half a cent, uh, which translates to $4.98 uh, per $100,000 worth of assessment. Um, so if you had a house at $200,000, it would double that at uh, nine, uh, 996 So... Uh, the way this is arrived at is we have to uh, 
put in the amount of taxes that were voted on uh, during town meeting. Um, and then- uh, Village meeting. That's right, village <laughs> meeting. Um, and then deduct any other uh, revenues um, and uh, add in any special articles, um, which in this case all totaled up to um, $600,288 um, would be the amount of taxes raised. And that's pretty much how it's done. Any questions? Jeffrey, do you have any questions? Um, I do not. This is uh, a very insignificant increase. So I hope the village residents are, are pleased with that. Um, we did our best to keep it there. So um, for those who don't have this in front of them, and I think next, next time, time, no, for next time, we should probably be able to have this up on the Zoom on the, screen. Yeah. yeah. Nice. yeah. Um, and again, you can find this on our on the website under the village trustees agendas. Uh, but last year, uh, fiscal year 2022, uh, the tax rate meant the cost per 100,000 was 199.02. This year, it will be 204. So per hundred thousand dollars, it's goes up uh, five dollars or four dollars and ninety eight cents. So that that will be the difference this year. Um, any trustees? Any other questions? Concerns? Nobody here. Okay. I move Next. that we accept the village tax rate. Oh yes. Of, Thank you, Jeffrey. <laughs> Is there of, a second? Of point two oh four for fiscal year 2023. Okay, Brenda seconds. Yep. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Next item, thank you for keeping me straight, Jeffrey. <laughs> sure. Um, next item is the short-term rental report. David, come on up. We'll let you sit with us too. So short-term rentals, I've been doing uh, some very diligent work and I have some numbers for you. And I drew off the two biggest sites, Airbnb and VRBO. And between the two of them, they list uh, around 62 rentals in the village, okay? So off of that immediately, you can take 29 or hotel rooms. So different people's hotel rooms. Uh, whatever ones there are. Uh, seven of those are b and -Bs. So I don't want to give it people's names, but people got permits to turn their house into a B&B &B rather than a short-term rental. Uh, let's see. Two of those are not in the village at all, even though they are listed in the village. And you can drop your pin wherever you want and say wherever your house is, but two of those are really in the book, or even uh, For permits, I had 12 of those permitted. The remaining 12 are permitted. Uh, two of those, the people told me they are not renting this year. And then I am working on four who found out it costs a lot of money to get a fire permit and put in egress windows or and or sprinkle buildings to get permits. So that is going on right now. One, I am trying to prove that they are renting without permits and I'm still working on them. If I do, uh, they'll get a ticket. If not, they'll be good to go. So that's pretty much what I have for permits in the village right now. So those, so there's three that are trying to yep, get a there were, it's, it's long. So one's actually sprinkling the building. Okay. Uh, one had to replace every window in their house. Oh wow! Um, yeah, we're talking ten to twenty thousand of dollars to be able to rent. Okay. So, but yeah, we're working on quite uh, three. Okay. So that really means that in the village, there are twelve that are totally good to go. Totally good to go. Yep. Okay. Well, if you take the B and B's out, yeah, all those other things out. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, trustees, do you have any questions or 
concerns about Airbnbs? David, have you have you issued one ticket yet since we started this process? I have not. No. So usually I talk to people, um, and I, most of them say they didn't realize or whatever. You know, this year I didn't have any re repeat offenders from last year. Otherwise, I would have ticketed them. Like I said, I'm chasing one right now. Um, but again, I can't prove they're renting yet at this point. I have a strong suspicion. But yeah, I haven't taken it anybody yet. Okay, but you wouldn't hesitate if this person persists, or whoever it might be. No, I would not hesitate. No. Thank you. Okay. Trustees, any other questions? Mm -hmm. Jeffrey, you're good? Okay. Good. good. Great. Thank you so much, David. I appreciate it. Moving on. Um, We've got the Village of Woodstock Public Trustee of Funds uh, Annual Procedures. Um, this is something that, again, is in our packets. Um, Jeffrey, um, is this something you can talk about? I can't. Oh, OK. Yeah, uh, so this is the Trustee of Public Funds is um, ours is Jill Davies. She is not available this evening, um, but she did send us uh, the processes. Um, so, Tom, you want to walk us through that? Sure. There's really three pages here. The first two pages are really kind of background information and how the uh, the uh, public trust funds are uh, operated um, and their schedule and, uh, and somewhat where the funds are invested. But the important thing for the trustees is the last page where there's, let's see, five, well, only four different funds that um, they are suggesting disbursements being made from. Um, and it starts with the uh, Frank S. Uh, McKenzie Fund, $300, the uh, Orly Whitcomb Fund, $5,600. Uh, $2,000 from the old fire station fund, and uh, this is a big one, Ethel Woods Sidewalk Fund, $51,429. So if the trustees are agreeable to that, you just need to make a motion to that effect. Those monies will come to the, uh, to the uh, village. The, uh... Uh, hold on, though, Tom. Um... I understand what you just said, and those monies are what uh, the trustee of public funds is suggesting we take out. Um, however, I'm concerned with how we, um, she's also suggesting how we spend it. Um, I'm concerned with how we differentiate this from our other funds once we pull that those sums out and how we track it. Uh, do you have a suggestion on how we can accurately do that separately from our budget so that we know, oh, yeah, that's right. We have uh, $5,600 from this particular one. Um, and also, uh, we, I think we need to uh, vote um, on, uh, on one of the funds. The Ethel Woods Sidewalk Fund has to be voted by the village at a warned meeting uh, in order to use those funds at all to just the rules of that particular fund. Um, and, uh, and so we need to decide if we are in agreement on how we're spending the money. Um, just throwing that out. Uh, as far as keeping track of it, we can um, make a line item in the revenues in the annual budget for each one of these, if you wanted to go into that amount of detail. Um, and, and it will show up as a um, as a revenue, the only problem with that is if you don't set it aside in a some sort of reserve fund, um, it's only going to show there for a year. So um, it might be behoove you to um, find projects to spend it on, or set it set it aside in a reserve fund. And it, can, can it be in a reserve fund where <clears throat> it's also differentiated? It, the, the, the funds can be listed separately within that reserve yeah. fund? Sure. We could just identify the fund, the trust fund that it came from, and then it would set there 
accordingly because I, I suspect, as you indicated, uh, there's uh, technicalities with each one of these funds, what it could be used for, um, and so forth. So we have to be careful with that. Yes. Yeah. And we do have to vote on that one fund. Uh, and then perhaps we could do that in September, Seton. Um, but um, with the with the, whoever's attending the village meeting at that time, as, if it's duly warned. Um, the other thing is there. Uh, it talks here about uh, writing disbursement checks for public trustee fees and auditor fees without identifying how much those fees are and which funds they would be taken from. I, I, I think we need to know the answer to exactly what those fees entail. Which one are you talking about, Jeffrey? Okay. Um, Jill has suggested that she write uh, disbursement checks to the village for public trustee fees and auditor's fees. Oh, okay. And yes. that, I'm referring to that. That's separate from the page where she makes suggestions on how we spend it. Um, uh, but what are those fees and how much do they amount to? And where do the funds come from to pay those fees? Which, which of these public trust funds, if that's the source? Do you follow me, Seaton? Well, we, it's, in your, it's in your packet yeah. under July. Process and procedures, July. Write disbursement checks to the village for public trustee fees and auditor's fees without detail. I'm curious. I think we need to know. I we what had the, that in a line item last year, didn't we? What's that? I thought we had that in a line item last year. <laughs> in the budget? Yeah. Am I making that up? Uh, no, I think there's something along those lines. I was just looking at it. Well, we have auditor's fees, but not for the public trust funds necessarily. Yes. And and which and what's the source of the payment for those fees? Is it which of these funds? Uh, because she notes the balance of each fund and what the impact would be of taking 8% out this year of each fund. Well, Jeffrey, maybe you should... Uh ask Jill that question and she could answer that and uh, then we could put that on the agenda for the future. I, I agree with you, Tom. Tom. I agree yeah. with you. An eternal thing for them, but, uh, mm -hmm. but if we feel that we need to know. <clears throat> but I do think we should put the, uh, the Orly Whitcomb Fund on, on the agenda for September for a public vote uh, unless the other trustees don't like that idea. What is the, uh, Jeffrey, just help me uh, to understand what, what, what differently needs, needs to be warned? Does the, does the warning specifically have to say that we are voting on that specifically? Yes. On the, no, on the Ethel Woods. Not, no, I didn't mean Orthley Whitcomb. I meant yeah. the <laughs> Ethel Woods sidewalk fund. That so part to, of the warning has to say the village trustees will be voting on. Oh, with the village, not just us. Uh, the village needs to approve that. Oh, at a, at a warned meeting. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, sorry. And she wants to, uh, she's suggesting emptying that, that fund altogether, I think, uh, and it needs to be voted. Okay. Yes, we'll add that to the September. Great, Great. thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey. Um, does anybody else have questions? Seems like we're going to table this until we have a couple of answers. Is everybody okay with tabling this until September? Sure. Yes. Jeffrey, you're good with that, obviously? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Great. Next item under new business is uh, to reschedule the November meeting. Um, we discovered last week uh, Tom discovered last week in conversations with Charlie and the reason that we are meeting here at 715 instead of our normal time upstairs is because they are counting the ballots upstairs um, and we obviously want to keep the ballots safe and away from people who aren't supposed to be in the room. 
Um, so that's why we're meeting it down here tonight. We would rather not have that conflict next in November when obviously they will be doing that again for the general election. Um, so we need to decide on what our alternate uh, meeting date will be. So instead of June, instead of November, who's the calendar? I think it's I want instead to of the, instead of the ninth. Yeah. So instead of November 9th, um, do, do it on the Wednesday, Wednesday. Just do it the next day. Yeah. yeah. Can we do it? How, Everybody's how about the 10th? 10th. Yeah, 10th is a Thursday. Yeah. Oh, I can't do the 8th is a Tuesday. Oh, the 8th is a Tuesday. Okay. I apologize. Yeah. So, yeah. so Wednesday the 9th? Yeah. At our normal 6 30? Yeah. yeah. Good. Jeffrey, you're good with that? Yes. Excellent. That was easy, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> okay awesome uh next item is up for discussion is um the discussion of permits for tribu park um this was a, a conversation that i think was started by tom um and jeffrey maybe about um we obviously have a permitting process for the village green we have a permitting process for east end park um, but we don't have anything for Tribu. Um, certainly we have events that happen there. Um, so Tom has looked into uh, what we would need to do in order to have any sort of permitting process or ordinance for that. Um, Tom, do you wanna tell us what you found? Uh, well, I found a few things. I checked with the uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns attorneys and um, um, they said that it is possible to issue permits for those uh, other facilities uh, without even really having policies. However, they did recommend um, adopting policies. We can't hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll start all over. Uh, I checked with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns attorneys on this matter, and they said that the uh, trustees could issue uh, event permits uh, for other uh, facilities and parks in the village um, that we don't have covered by an ordinance or a policy. However, they recommended adopting policies to do that and gave us some uh, sample policies uh, that the trustees have. So I think it's a matter of uh, taking a look at the policies um, and um, uh, changing them a little bit to adopt to uh, Woodstock and then, and then uh, uh, eventually adopt them. But in the interim, uh, there's nothing wrong with us uh, uh, issuing event perm permits for these other locations if the board so wants to do it. I mean, you can deny them, you can issue them, it's just much better to have a policy and even better to have an ordinance. The ordinance allows you to enforce it. In other words, let's say somebody shows up without an event uh, permit and, and uh, does something on, on a, a, a park um, and they don't want to leave. Um, and then, you know, we could issue them a ticket or do some other sort of enforcement activity. Okay. Okay. Um... I see that there's a question, um, and since we've moved to Rosenberg's rules, I just want to follow that. Um, the now that we've talked about it, the next thing um, we left these you just laminated these and we left them upstairs. <laughs> um, are there any technical questions about what Tom has said? We'll have time for conversation, but is there a technical question from any of the trustees? Does it include all these parks and which parks we don't need permits now? Just Teagle was in tribute. Yeah. Okay, just that's those two parts we're talking just about. Just Tribu and Teagles. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we don't. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Any other technical questions from the trustees? What is the technical question? So a technical question is like what he said, like something specific about the policy or something like that, not a, not examples. So something very specific about uh, we have uh, we have a sample that VLCT provided to us. So if there was anything about the technicalities of that as opposed to the broader conversation. So if there's no more technical questions, I'll move on to public comment. Yes. And can you tell us your uh, uh, your name, please? Excuse me. Um, Charlotte Hollingsworth. And uh, as far as a technical question too, have you heard of the First and 14th Amendment, the right to for free speech and 
um, a peaceful assembly. Uh, we do Black Lives Matter every Monday from 5 to 5.30. We don't talk to anyone. We hold up a sign that says Black Lives Matter. It's for human decency. And um, we really also do it in the spirit of Jane Curtis, who died at 103, who was an activist and fought for things that are um, the right, I mean, rights of people. And democracy, I mean, this is democracy, and if we have to have a permit every week to stand out there for, 50, or for a half an hour, um, I don't, what are, you try, what are you trying to prove here? I don't get it. It's just, it's very um, disturbing. Thank you for your comment. Uh, I think this was initially brought up because there were some um, activities in the park that, that, we, that Tom received some concern from citizens about. Um, and so it was an opportunity for us to just take a look and see, is this something we need to do? Is it not? Um, I don't know that we have traditionally had any sort of issues, um, but it's an opportunity for us to look at it, um, you know, because if somebody decided one day to set up a, I don't know, a carnival in Tribute Park, that would be an issue, right? Um, and a carnival, I'm, I'm giving a suggestion. So if we, so if this is an opportunity for us to take a look, um, you know, I think we take, take an opportunity and certainly we want input from the public and I appreciate that. I, I love that y'all do that. Um, mm -hmm. And so we'll, you know, we're going to take all of that certainly into account. Yes. Um, Margaret Fraser and Laura, I was in Woodstock. Um, of course, we have to look at our constitutional rights, which are guaranteed. They're counting votes upstairs mm -hmm. because this is what democracy is about. We're talking about a handful of people who stand for a half hour. We, is that called an event? This How is are you defining an event? Yeah. Secondly, it's a gathering, which is in the Constitution, of a peaceful assembly. We're not making any discussion of any kind. I don't know what other events, although I look across from Tribute Park, I've seen some people, I think it's a religious group, I'm not sure, as far as I know, they're not selling anything, so it's not commercial use at the park. They're, I guess, if they are a religious group, they are exercising their freedom of speech right. I feel that this kind of discussion is opening the door that would be very unfortunate if people look at Woodstock as a place where this kind of assembly is not welcome. And just to let you know, I have a friend that I've spoken to who is speaking to an attorney, African-American attorney, about what you might be considering. So from a public relations point of view, I think you should really think about what you're talking about. Thank you, Peggy. I appreciate it. This is not singling out of any sort of group. We are taking a broad look at, at the two parks that do not require permits, which but would be- well maybe. Well, maybe. And this is a this is a broad conversation. It is not targeted at anyone. And it behooves us when the public asks us to look into something for us to look into it, to have a conversation about it. And we're we are having that conversation. Is there another public comment? Let's just see. We've got yes, go ahead, please. Um the gathering is different. Most permits are for commercial. Uh, and I'm sorry, what was your name? Oh, sorry, Mary Corrigan. Okay, thank you. So, oh, um, excellent. Most permits, in my understanding, are for commercial enterprises. If I want to have a concert, I probably need a permit. In fact, I went to Chief Blish before we started this and said, so we want to do this. Do you have any issues? And he said, absolutely not. And if you need our help, just mm -hmm. let me know. And... Um, so I hate to see, because, you know, people gather, teenagers gather. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be a gathering that they need a permit for? People my age gather just to have 
conversation and maybe a coffee or whatever in various places out in the sun. Um, do we need a permit to do that too? I mean, it, it's just a little, I hope you take a very careful look at Absolutely. the difference between a gathering of people and a protest or a commercial event. Yeah, and I think, I, and thank you for the input, and you are talking to, um, to a well-versed advocate who has protested and, <laughs> and been pushed back by police and has to know where I'm allowed to stand. I know exactly what the line is in front of the NRA, <laughs> where to stand. Um, so I'm, I'm very familiar with that. Um, and as somebody who's protested a lot in DC, I can tell you, they tell you where you can and cannot protest or gather. And certainly this is nothing of that scale. We are not looking to say, you can't have a picnic. We're not looking to say you can't do anything. At this point, it is an open conversation. And these, and these are great things. And again, I think the Monday gathering is wonderful. You know, we did when, um, when RBG died, we did not ask for a permit. I'm the one who organized that. And so I said, we're just gonna, we're just gonna gather. It wasn't anything major. You notice we didn't have anything big stands. And we didn't require a permit because it was people gathering to remember somebody extraordinary. So we're not looking, I am definitely not looking to put the kibosh on that. Um, I, I, I will go to my grave <laughs> fighting for things like that. So you certainly have an advocate up here um, and, and that's not something we want, but we want to have a conversation so that, so that people don't misuse that space, absolutely. You know, a question? Yeah, I just say, I don't think anybody's trying to, to shut down anything you guys are doing. I think it's great. Personally, I think it's fantastic. Um, I just think we have to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And uh, when this conversation came up, I think earlier, like a year or more ago, um, we as a governmental body or advising governmental body need to be consistent. If one, one park needs a permit for something, the other park should have one too, and they all should have one. But I think if, the, if a permit is determined to be needed, you should be able to get one for the whole year. We don't have to apply for it every week. Mm -hmm. Say every Monday, this is what we do, and this is what we get, and everybody signs off on it once a year or something like that, so that's all clear. So whichever way it goes, I think that that the um, where you're, it's not a protest, it's not a demonstration station, it's just information you're giving out and support. I think that's great, but I think we just need to do it through the protocol mm -hmm. that's, that's proper for the whole town and is fair to all the parks and all the permits that maybe may or may not be needed. So. Um, like I say, I think if you if you, if it is needed, and I'm not sure it is because I'm not educated well in in this kind of per, per, permits versus ordinances versus all those things, I don't have a big government background, but I think it should be a regular basis. And if it's, if, if some, some kind of permission is needed, we should just say it's every week for the whole year and be done with it. Yes, you have a comment. Yes, go ahead. I'm Lily Noel, and I live in the town of Woodstock, and um. I'm curious to know the purpose of a permit that you have in mind. You know, not everybody may agree with what we're doing, mm -hmm. but I think that that shouldn't, that shouldn't determine whether one needs a permit or not. If, if someone were protesting something that you all disagreed with, would, would that justify requiring a permit? I don't think Oh, no, so. absolutely no. not. And so, so if we were to go and stand in front of a store and do what we're doing, mm -hmm. would we need a permit for that? Is that what you're You'd need the permission of the store. <laughs> Is that what, well, would we? Yes, if yeah, if you're on private property, on absolutely. Sidewalk? Well, it's not private property on oh. the sidewalk. Though. No. Uh, so if we were to stand on the side, I just don't understand the purpose of the notion of a permit for what we're doing. Oh, no, and, and again, we're not saying this is a group that would need a permit. Like this, again, we are starting this conversation and trying to think about, do we need something? You know, we when we went through this process with the East End Park a year ago, two years ago, there was a, you know, you don't need to get a permit unless it's more than a certain number of people if you're gonna have structures. There was a whole line of things, and so, you know, if somebody says, I'm going to go have my kid's birthday party with 15 kids and a cake. No, like, I don't, I don't. It is more about making sure that keeping an eye on, on the, the use, use of, of the space, space and making sure that if there is somebody that has something large, then they can have the space or not have the space. It's, I don't th I think it's more about being able to manage and know what's, what's happening in the village. We do, we do the same thing with, 
the with the green. I mean, that is a we have requirements. We have requirements for East End Park, and it's somebody comes to us and asks for a permit. You know, we have rules about it has to be a nonprofit. And it can only be this and that. Um, so we would certainly apply that same litmus test, that the same regulations to if we extended this to something else. Um, it seems to me, and again, you know, what do I know? But it seems to me that it that requiring a permit is limiting a person is limiting our or anybody else who wants to do what we're doing our free speech it, it is not that but it it, it is it not is, it, and it, i feel it is um no. <laughs> and and i respect i respect your opinion there is and i i am not a constitutional scholar I, again i will tell you my experience with protesting in a lot of different places, there are always rules to gathering and rallies and protests that, there, that you just have to follow. We don't have anything at Tribute Park, but we do if you were on the green. We do if you would be in East End Park and you were going to have 100 people getting together. If it's 15, maybe it wouldn't be. You know, so and, if 100 people were to get together in the East End? Yeah. For an organized event. Your policies are we have policies that say you need to get a permit. They're written policies. Yeah. If just 100 people wanted to get together in the East End Park. If they're going to be taking up that much space, and yeah. I mean, we, we and minutes. it is a spelled out thing that we did in front of the public. The East End Park, people who created the East End Park had input. They actually took the first swipe at it. If you had 100 people getting together in the green, yeah, you would have to get a permit. These, these are things that exist already um, um, and, and again, again I, I don't know, know that we're going to do this this is the beginning of a discussion yeah. um, but no we already have permit requirements mm -hmm. for both of those parks so if 100 people wanted to get together um, I'm trying to think, along the sidewalk in town along the sidewalk in if 100 people just like hands across America style I don't know what that is like, oh <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing uh, what, what, I mean, would they need a permit? Uh, there is a right of way. Robbie could answer this better than I could. There is a right of way on the sidewalk that you can't block people's way on a sidewalk. So I would imagine that would be something that he would handle if 100 people all of a sudden stood on the sidewalk and didn't let people walk. Well, like, but if they let people walk, you know, I, 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 you wouldn't, I guess you wouldn't so. need a permit at this point. You wouldn't. No. You don't obstruct the sidewalk. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I just don't. I, there's just a part of me, and I think my friends agree, that that suggests the idea of having to get a permit to articulate what we want to articulate mm -hmm. in a, in a, 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 a um, small a, a, in a safe way. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, I, I just don't understand why why there would be an a consideration that maybe a permit would be well and again this is not this is one not 100 percent happening this is the beginning of a discussion so it is not targeting your group there is there is no intention of doing that and again as somebody who does social justice advocacy for my life that would never happen not well, not if, on my watch yeah i mean if there were a group who were who stood up for something that i disagreed with I would also think that they don't need permits. No well, and we want to make sure that that's all fair. So this, so we, we and we're going to take all that into consideration. I think we're obviously, we're not making decisions tonight, okay. but we have the input and we will, you know, be working in consultation with Robbie about what we can and can't do. And we have lawyers that can talk about what we can or can't do. Um, but I will tell you that as a fellow demonstrator, <laughs> <laughs> who has been yelled, yelled at, at my people, people <laughs> and had things thrown on me. Um, I, I, am, I am on the side of, of advocates and I am as well versed as I can be in where you can stand and where you can't and public, private and all those sorts of things. You know, there is, if you've ever been to DC, there is a specific park called Freedom Plaza mm -hmm. and everybody goes to Freedom Plaza because that's where the city says you can go, you know? And all of these things are are are, are permitted, um, and that's a place that sees it all the time. Um, if you go to my favorite one is um, 
outside of San Francisco, there is a designated protest zone. And they said, if you want to protest the Redwoods, this is where you can do it. And what if you don't do it in the Redwoods? Well, then they've decided that, 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 that that's where you have to be. So, so what if you I, you'd that's have to ask the Redwoods do. people. <laughs> you'd have to ask the Muir Woods people. But those are, um, those are restrictions just like we, like we do uh, out on the green and in East End Park. And, um, but again, this is the beginning of, of a conversation. Yeah. No, no one, one is, is trying, trying to, to silence anyone. anyone. I will no, never, no. 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 Just, it's, my two cents worth is, is just uh, in general. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, this is getting very repetitive. Whatever it might be. Yeah, thank you. Uh, is, is, is a right. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, last, last comment and then we'll move on. I just said a very quick one. I'm still yeah. married party. Yeah. And um, if we get 25 to 50 people, I think we should have a permit. Uh, and I think mm -hmm. that permits are a good thing for bigger spaces like the East End or the Green. But you need to know, because if there were two other uh, gatherings or if there were 10 other gatherings, it would be a big mess. And right. yeah. people wouldn't know which one to go to. Like sometimes you go to the wrong funeral and they <laughs> So I understand that, but as I said, I, I think we'd all be very happy to be permitted if we start having big crowds. Oh, we're 10 gotcha. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate I appreciate all the input. Okay, so we're going to table this topic until next month, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about it. Um, the next item on the agenda is the addition that uh, Jeffrey added, which is um, house numbers um, in the 911 system. Jeffrey... Robbie, yes. do you guys want to talk about that? Yeah. Well, I, I can say that, um, you know, the village versus the town has retained the same house numbers in the system because we are so, you know, confined. We are one square mile um, mm -hmm. and for the 9-11 system. And that, that's been permitted to date. And so somebody's house might be five the green and um, under the town system or the state system, uh, it would become uh, ec a, a number like 175 the green, whatever feet it is from the end of the road, um, which is how that's gauged. Now, there are so many historic houses and, and numbers in Woodstock that when, when this issue came up, that the village voted very strongly to retain the current addresses that we have. And it's come to our attention and Tom brought this to our attention, that um, uh, this had to do with uh, the uh, private road that we gave a permit to um, uh, in the village, um, that uh, there's, talk in this, there's talk in the state house of requiring everyone to follow the other rules. Um, and I think we need to figure out a concerted effort to see if we can get um, uh, more information on when the legislature is going to deal with this, who's going to deal with this. And we need to lobby for the freedom to maintain the addresses that we currently have in the village. And that's why I'm bringing this up because uh, I don't want it to just fall off our plates. Is that something that VLCT will be working on, Tom? Tom do you to say? House number? Yeah, yeah, they would be following that. No, I think no? that's, uh, I don't know, who, who does that? Guys, you guys know. Uh, there's a board about P911 board. Yep. Uh, and if, if, if I can, and as your e 911 coordinator, I strongly suggest you, you go to a uniform numbering system. Strongly suggest and urge, because there are many, many problems in this village. Many problems. Tell us. We have no more numbers to give. We're actually making up numbers now. You will be receiving in the next few weeks a letter from the state of Vermont saying that we are legally numbering buildings. The mm -hmm. village trustee current board will have the sole responsibility and liability if there is a death issue or injury. That letter is coming uh, because we had to make up a number that's way out of whack because there's no numbers left. There's no numbers left. To get to 4 High Street, you actually have to go up Slate Lincoln, 
Lincoln Street to Slayton Terrace and down on Mount Penny. That's how you get to Four Eyes Street. Um, I can go on and on with the inaccuracies. So I know people <laughs> have historic nostalgia and like their numbers, and I agree. But for me to do my job, and probably Robbie will echo, echo that, we need to have a uniform system. And there are a lot of problems. Uh, back in the day, people were just making up numbers on Mechanic Street and putting whatever, so they go in weird orders. The same up on Slayton Terrace. Uh, Multi-story buildings have no rhyme or reasons. There's no sweet 100 for the first floors, you know, 200 for the three, uh, 200 for the second floor, and so on. So I, I urge us to look into this. Um, I know it's not what everybody wants to hear, but I do urge it. Dave, what would it look like? We'd have entire streets would be changed. Their numbers would be no longer 18, but 1800, and I mean, how, what would it look yeah, like? There's no mileage base uh, in the village. There'd be, example. there'd be nothing over a four-digit number, and that would be mainly the Route 4 area if, if you chose to make that one name and attach on to the town's Route 4 system. Uh, but everything more than likely would be four digits or less, and, and, and it'd be mileage base and offer for growth and consistency in the numbering. Uh, we have numbers on the left that should be on the right, and, and vice versa. Yeah. So this would change everybody's address completely? It would change, it, just like the town. The town did it 2012. There's a, there's a huge difference between the town and the village, David. It's one of the first things I've ever disagreed strongly with you on. And uh, there, although there are some problems, by and large, Emergency services know where every location is within the village of Woodstock. Uh, Hartford Ambulance doesn't. Windsor Ambulance doesn't. They come to our town. 